We've completed the drawing portion of it. We're working with a live model. It takes about oh, 30 minutes, perhaps, to get the sketch down. I'm spending a fair bit of time making sure that I've got a relatively accurate drawing because that, that is my roadmap. Uh, a watercolor is a difficult medium once it's put down to, to correct it. So I'd, I'd like to start with a relatively accurate Portion, so I don't have to think about it, I don't have to worry about that, so that I can concentrate on the paint application, etc. Uh, so the drawing is complete, and I'm applying the first color, the first layer, and I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre and, and, and a yellow, and I'm mixing it up in my pan using a wide brush, about an inch, inch and a, inch and a half brush. Uh, I'm looking at other areas where I can see the play of color, like in the shadows. Well, this, this one here seems to be kind of a warm shadow, so I'm putting in some reds, cadmiums. I'm not going to tell you exactly the colors because sometimes I go through my paints and I just take a paint tube that's been around for a long time, it's dried up, and, and, and I put it on my palette. And I actually don't really know exactly what color it is, and I, I, don't, I don't particularly care to know. I, I, I do find that there's a little bit of preference for certain colors, but it's interesting not to get too rigid with a certain palette, and you throw a little wild, co wild color in there. Of course, the problem becomes, well, what do you do when you actually find a color that you really like? Well, good luck. So I'm not that organized. So um, I think the principle behind watercolor is that it's it's a little bit on the quick draw. Uh, don't be be a little bit more impulsive. Don't be so restricted. Uh, be a little bit flu flu fluider, if you will. Um, I mean, I still paint with a lot of control, um, but but I'm being careful not to overwork something, and that truly is a huge part of the art, which is here's the portrait, for example, and what is the least amount of information that I can paint to to make that portrait say something and stop and and that's that's a very complicated journey to go down, and it takes some time to figure that one out, which ends up becoming a much a much more simpler methodology. So um, again, that's that's a maturity that comes a, as you as you continue. You're going to notice that while I'm applying paint, you can see the reflection of the uh, there. The model took a break, and I dried dried off the water, and I'm uh, doing another layer. So I, I start with a fair bit of water and model takes a break, I dry it off, and so now I can kind of reapply paint, and also I can put my hand onto areas where I don't have to worry that I'm actually putting my hand into uh, wet paint. Uh, it does take some time, you know, to, depending on the, uh, the ambient temperature, um, air conditioning, uh, uh, et cetera, and how much humidity is in the air will determine the length of time to dry, but the uh, air dryer does a great job, a great service to us to determine, uh, give us a little bit more control over the dying pro drying process. Continue to go over the figure, looking at details in the face, not getting too carried away. Looking at the shadow, applying a second layer on the shadow areas, putting in some additional details in the face. Here we've kind of skipped forward a little bit so I'm looking at the hair. Now I'm going to go ahead and start throwing a little bit of background color because I want to maintain this dimensionality of the figure popping out from the background. So you don't want to just paint the figure and then you have a background and, you, and, and it looks like it's pasted on. So uh, I think there's a beauty with watercolor where you can wash out the edges so you don't end up with these hard edges and it tends to uh, float a little bit more on the background. 
So there's a little bit more of a relationship with the figure, the background, foreground. You know, sometimes I'm 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 guessing. You know, I'm 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 not 100% sure what what the proper thing is. And sometimes I'll put a color in, and I really don't think it's the right color. And I'll while it's still wet, I'll go ahead and take a napkin, paper towel, and I'll blot up that particular paint. Or if I put some paint on, let's say the nose or underneath the nose, and it's too dark, well, I'll take that. Uh, paper and blot it up. There you can see me sort of blotting up and I'm actually kind of reintroducing some highlights. So it is kind of an organic thing. You, you are sort of working impulsively. Sometimes things don't work and while it's still wet you have time to remove that pigment if you will. And sometimes it does work. Sometimes you actually have to wait till it dries because when it's in a puddle of water, it's a little bit hard to tell what the true value of it is until the water evaporates and then you can kind of tell the intensity of that particular color. I mean, as always, it's, it's always smarter to work lighter and keep adding successive layers versus putting it on in one shot of dark and then finding out that after it dries it's too dark and then you've got no way to or you got it's very difficult to get that pigment off continuing to add some detail in in the hair here um i put some pigment in the hair but i can see that it's too sharp so i'm taking some of this green background color and, and I'm running it into the hair so that it kind of softens it and some of the brown from the hair, the burnt umber, uh, kind of bleeds into the green so it sort of makes a more of a blended effect instead of a, a real hard sharp edge. Now you can manipulate a little bit of how the eye is perceiving the subject and you'll see me around the face I'll add some additional color to to make the primary subject which is going to be really the portrait uh, pop out uh, now the paper's dry and I take my pencil and I'll go ahead and I'll redraw things to uh, look at the model and I'll check and correct if there's any corrections to be made because as you progress further and further down the painting you're going to um, have less places to make errors and so that's why I like to redraw things it, it instead of having to use paint to define an edge I can sort of use a pencil that I know that I if I don't like it I can rub it out I continue to work over the entire piece. Again, you'll notice that in some of the shadow areas, like the shadow that's created by her arm, I've got some lovely uh, reds and yellows and, and a little bit of green colors. I think that's kind of the beauty of watercolor. You can lay a wash in and then you can just sort of dabble it with another color. Now, I ran into a little bit of trouble with the dress here and um, I would say what I should have done is because every time she sat down the folds on the dress changed and it would have been much wiser for me to have concentrated on the folds in one 20 minute session and defined them because what happened I got it started she took a break and then she came back and the folds were all in a, all in a completely different place and you can't you can't control that so that that we could say was probably operator error but you know, you do, you're do. you learning something and I, I, I think if I didn't mention it, you probably wouldn't be aware of it or focus about it too much. Here I'm kind of concentrating a little bit on the folds. And I'm kind of popping out that background a little bit more so that the figure 
will pop out. Drawing in some of the details, just helping me to kind of keep control. Now see now this is a, a cool color, this blue next to the face uh, gives us a lot of, lot, of contra lot of contrast where we're throwing the cool colors tend to recede or they do recede and it's going to push that figure further back and then you've got the warm colors on the face and it tends to pop out so we're, we're really playing with uh, dimensionality with the use of color and the different hues of color we're getting close to completed This is where I've sort of realized that these folds were giving me a little bit of trouble because they, they kept changing. So as a good example, it's always smart to do the face and get a fair amount of the details done in the, in the, in the portrait in one, session, in one sitting, in one 20 minute or 25 minute session so that uh, you don't start it and then you come back and then it's 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 going to be just a little bit different okay we're getting near the end I'm trying to fix up the folds here I'm using the pencil to kind of sharpen up some of the edges if I feel like they're too weak. And that gets us pretty much to the end. So thanks for watching.